All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. We're going to talk about uh, something called Dire Watch. It's a uh, something you, you can use to display what Dire Wolf is doing on your Raspberry Pi. You can see it down there. It's, it's really what's driving that screen right there. Uh, coming up next on KM6 LYW Radio. All right, that's the bumper music. Sorry, I don't know how much more uh, mileage I can get out of that gag. You guys keep encouraging me there. So that's our bumper music. Remember, we have really low production value here at KM6 LYW Radio. So we can pass the savings on to you. And I don't know how many more times I can use that joke either. Um, so uh, welcome back. Yeah, let's talk about Dire Watch. It's some software that you can use to drive one of these little displays. These little TFT displays you can smash onto your Raspberry Pi. And then you can use it to see what Direwolf is doing under the hood to show you what stations are coming through and it's transmitting and receiving or whether we got Bluetooth connected or not. Um, so these little displays, you can get at Adafruit and they have some, some driver software there and then uh, Direwatch really just, just drives this. So, so this display is only 15 bucks. Um, you can get knockoffs on Amazon, but I would encourage you to go to Adafruit because they just do such a great job and it's the same price anyway. Um, so uh, this is based on the ST7789 chipset. Um, which is what Dire Watch is going to want to look for when it sees a display. They got a couple of different sizes too. They got this little tiny uh, half height one. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is it here. I don't know. Think it's 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 basically the same exact same thing. Only it's half height, and there, there's just no chance they're going to show it to me here. But <laughs> anyways, get one of get the Adafruit TFT 1.3 inch 240 by 240 TFT add-on that's what this is and then they've got a half height one as well uh, basically for the same price we can use either one and there's other ST7 uh, what do they call these uh, 7789 displays out there on Amazon I've seen them I know other people are using them I don't have first-hand experience with them but I, I'm told and I've actually been shown Dire Watch will drive those as well but uh, try and get that uh, dimension and definitely get that uh, that chipset all right, so back here on the DigiPi, if you don't know what that is already, you can, of course, get your own DigiPi, which is a Raspberry Pi image, uh, ideally in the Raspberry Pi Zero, especially the new one. That's what you see here. Um, that's at Krager.org slash DigiPi. It's basically like a data mode hotspot for your amateur radio. A data mode hotspot for your amateur radio. And all you need is a web browser to drive it, and you can get all these cool digital modes. So that's the DigiPi. Uh, from km6 lyw radio and of course what's driving the display on that is in fact dire watch um so let's go over to the, let me let me close this let's go over here yeah i want to leave um so this is the digipi home screen or main interface and these are all the services amateur radio services it implements um so it's in digipeter mode right now which is where we want it and it's running uh, an old version of dire watch we've got a new one out there so what i want you to do is open up a shell if you are a digipi user or use putty to get into your raspberry pi there's a little shell link down there now we can log directly into our raspberry pi again the, the point of the digipi is so you only need a web browser and that includes shell access Let's see if I can type the password in correctly. I don't know why the password, it's the password's Raspberry, but I don't know why that's so, I have, it's so hard to type. Anyways, here we are. Um, at this point, I want you to do make dir test. And we're just going to CD into test and there's nothing in there. And then I want you to go out to uh, GitHub where I, I'm hosting the Dire Watch, my Dire Watch software. And this is at github.com slash L slash dire watch um, there's just no way i can zoom that in i don't think but anyways that that's the url and then i want you to click on code and the little copy symbol here so it's been copied to my clipboard and then back in our, our shell uh, for on the digipi or your raspberry pi once you type git clone and that uh, that url we just copied from the github site so it's uh, github.com slash craig url slash dire watch dot git yeah that url so we are cloning it. It's cloned. Now when we type ls, we're going to see a directory called direwatch. And we do an ls inside that directory, we're going to see all the files direwatch needs, including direwatch itself. Uh, I guess we can't have permissions in GitHub. So I want you to do change mod 755.direwatch.py. That makes it executable. You know, Not all files are executable in the Linux file system. That, 755 sets the permissions uh, to be executable. Now you can run DireWatch, um, but before you do, um, if you're a DigiPy person, I want you to just copy DireWatch.py to your home directory. So tilde means home. I, I know, it's Linux stuff. Copy it to tilde. Um, let me make this a little, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make the a little smaller. You guys don't need to see me. 
Uh, you do need to see the digipy though. Let me just make these a little, uh, little smaller. Okay, now you see the whole browser. All right, so I'm not going to hit enter here because I've already got a copy in my home directory that I've kind of hacked up for you guys, but that's what you'd want to do. So copy that to your home directory. All right, so now I'm going to CD to my home directory. In fact, if you provide no arguments to the CD command, it takes you to your home directory. Um, <laughs> Linux tricks. Don't say you didn't learn anything here. Hopefully, hopefully this font isn't too small. Um, so at this point, we've got the DigiPy in uh, DigiPeter mode. There's already a Dire Watch running, so I'm going to see what that process is. So I'm going to do PS AOX pipe grep, um, and I'm going to Dire Watch .py, and there it is. It's running, and I'm going to kill it two five one two two. You know, you could just use the DigiPy interface to basically do this, um, but I'm going to kill it. And then we got a blank screen over on the DigiPy. I should point down. It means DireWatch isn't driving that display anymore. But we've got a new version of DireWatch here. And we can run it with any command line switches we like. So I'm going to DireWatch.py. Um, and let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to use a new, um, well, let me do it this way. I'm going to do dash T for title. We'll just give you the, the whole dog and pony photo. I'm going to dog and pony show <laughs> APRS. Uh, digi and then the log file you need to specify with dash l and that's going to be in run direwolf.log at least it is in my case it'll be in your working directory wherever you're running dire watch um, and i'm just going to run it like that and we're going to see the digipy light up and there it is it's in aprs digi mode at least that's what the title was that i specified and i don't know if i can make this bigger and it's cruising through the call signs in the direwolf.log now, you know, I actually, uh, it's, it's scrolling back away in the direwolf.log. I, I didn't want to come on in the air and then and then not have any APRS traffic <laughs> there. It got through the, the backlog. Now it's just reading the log coming from the radio. Yeah, I can see the packets rolling in now. But anyways, that's that's DireWatch uh, in default mode. So there's a new option for DireWatch. I want you guys to check this out. Uh, I always liked it how, like, in a Yaes2 FTM 400, you know, I did a full screen display. It showed the icon of the radio, where he was, distance, maybe the temperature, wind speed, if it was a weather station. Um, so we can do that now with, with the new version of DireWatch. So I'm going to type, there's a new option. Um, so I'm going to add dash O. And that stands for, I don't know, I just made it up, for one at a time or one on screen at a time. So now if I put use the dash O option on DireWatch, you get an entirely different looking display. And in this case, you can see it is scrolling. It does a full screen icon for every single station it's going through. Now, remember, I've got it scrolling through, uh, you know, the backlog of Dire Watch. That's why it's going so fast that we can see some demonstrations. But hopefully you can see there's a lot of different icons there. They're full screen. We've got the call sign down at the bottom. We've got other in interesting information in the packet that's displayed there that we didn't have before. Like for the weather station that you just saw there, we've got the temperature, rain since midnight. Uh, wind and direction, and then uh, a comment field down at the bottom. Uh, hey, there's my uh, <laughs> there's my digipeter. Um, then the comment field. So most position packets will have a comment. Virtually, virtually all weather, all packets will have a some sort of comment field. Now the comment field isn't working perfectly. So if the packet's compressed, um, you'll see a strange comment like that. See, I see that punctuation. So I know he's using a compressed packet. Um, that's actually um, APRS lib, which is a great Python library, which I'm using that, that really parses these APRS packets into what you can see here on the screen. So that garbly look on the screen, that's the actual content of an APRS packet. Each uh, each one of these lines. So this is like one packet, you know, all the information that's in there. Unfortunately, APRS lib has a problem with the compressed APRS packet. So the comments not working, but everything else is working. In fact, I was going to reach out to the author. I already filed a bug there. Um, but again, that's only compressed position packets. So, you know, I don't know if you've got a radio. I'm going to have this digipeat. And there I am, my little running man. It says, Craig, at 145. Ah, someone just overwrote me. So they change at every second. So let me do it again. There I am, Craig at 145430. That's my club repeater, and there's my running man. What you might not have already noticed is that for USB connected radios, the old version of DireWatch, that little red symbol never lit up. I could never get the folks. Um, over at direwolf to exert a voltage on a gpio pin um, so i could monitor it so what i did is basically you know I, i'm just watching the log file if i see direwolf transmitting i'll light up that red for, uh, circle for a moment in fact let me do it again watch watch the uh, the red led here so we got green is obviously receive it now when it's uh, transmitting which it should do when it 
repeats a packet. So it turns red. So that packet was repeated because it's in digipeter mode. So that is the new instance of Dire Watch. In fact, somewhere I've got a phone hooked up to it, and I have no idea where the phone is because <laughs> this little blue Bluetooth icon is illuminated right now. So I have no idea where that is. I was going to give you maybe a, an APRS Droid demo. But hey, I know this video is running long. I just wanted to make you guys aware of a new version of DireWatch. Um, that's completely original software from KM6 LYW Radio, and it's really kind of the you know, the foundation for the DigiPi project, but you can stick it on your uh, Raspberry Pi and get the same behavior. Just to download get DireWatch from GitHub, uh, run it, point it at your DireWolf log file, and it will parse that, and it'll display the proper icons and information about each each uh, each packet that's coming through over DireWolf. All right, so I have to do business here. So at the KM6 LYW Radio slash Patreon, um, I should have this at the top here, uh, patreon.com slash km6liw. Um, every dollar helps. In fact, uh, you get access to early release software from km6liw radio. Um, that includes things like Dire Watch, which we've just gone over here. Um, support's been overwhelming. Um, uh, I got this all screwed up. So Fu, Brian, Jake, Jason, Dan, Christopher, Simon. I you know I say Simon, even though I know it's Simon. That's just an interesting spelling. Simon, thank you guys. Um, going through the list here, there is just a lot of people um, I, I wish I could read everyone's names but you know that's probably a completely separate video so thank you uh, JD Dusty James John Patty Ian Howard uh, Ronald um, it just it just doesn't stop you guys and I really really do appreciate it Alan Rick Andrew Ed Larry Bradley uppercase Bradley um, all the way down to Gordon Shepard. Thank you guys uh, for Patreons at KM6LYW Radio. So it's patreon.com slash KM6LYW Radio. Every bit counts and you get early access to software like the stuff you just saw here and it, and it keeps motivating me. And, uh, you know, we've got Discord link. We've got mailing groups, uh, uh, mailing lists about the DigiPi. So, you know, if you can be part of the community, we really look forward to, to seeing you there. All right. This is another installment of KM6LYW Radio talking about DireWatch. Uh, and uh, I'm clear.